Hey everybody, welcome to GGS Railways. My name is Greg, this is my YouTube channel. All right, what are we doing tonight? What is all this? Well, this is the uh, model train lot, the Ives model train lot that Melvin sent us. And uh, I've got the, uh, the locomotive all apart here and I uh, ordered some wheels. Um, but uh, before we get into all that, I promised last video that we'd uh, talk about, you know, what this actually is and some of the dates and so forth, because, you know, people like to know that. I like to know that. So, all right, so the, uh, the uh, steeple cab locomotive, and we will, help, will if, if this video is successful, we'll have this all in one piece uh, by the end of the video. But this is the uh, cab, this is the little motor, uh, and this is an Ives 3251 steeple cab locomotive, once again. And it was manufactured by Ives uh, from 1918 to 1927. So that's very cool. That makes this guy quite old. Very nice. So, all right, then the parlor car, which is this guy here, uh, numbered 552. Would have been manufactured from 1916 to 1918. Uh, the mail car, also known as the baggage car, uh, the, uh, number 550, would have been manufactured all from, also from 1916 to 1918. And then last but not least, the uh, chair car, the number 551, would have been manufactured between 1916 and 1922. So, all right. So, um, I think we can uh, safely assume that uh, all this kind of came together and probably was a set sometime, oh, in the probably early to mid 1920s. <laughs> so, all right, that's a good guess. That's close enough. So, all right, let's take a look at what we've got here. I'm going to move this camera to where we can look a little bit closer and kind of describe what we're doing. Uh, I will say uh, before we get too much further, that this is kind of uh, going to be what I would say is kind of an advanced repair. Uh, pulling these little wheels off and getting the new wheels on uh, is probably a bigger task than a lot of people might know. Uh, actually, these weren't hard to get off. These are the old wheels because uh, they, <laughs> they get bigger when they rot. But anyway, and they do rot. So, all right, let's get the camera moved. We'll talk about this a little bit more. All right, so let's talk about what's on the table. Of course, you know, we have the train cars and we probably will not do much with those tonight. But the locomotive, uh, like I said earlier, like I alluded to earlier, we are hoping that if all goes well, we will have this all in one piece by the end of this video. That may be optimistic, but we'll see. So, all right, the wheels. We needed wheels. These uh, are the original Ives wheels. Now, I could not find Ives wheels for sale uh, to save my life. So, what we did is I looked and I looked and I looked, and the closest thing I could find was some actually American Flyer. Uh, steeple cab wheels. They are very similar. Uh, <laughs> if anybody notices the difference, well, okay, good for them. <laughs> anyway, so, all right. Um, the uh, issue with the new wheels is that they are slightly larger on the diameter where the axle goes in than uh, our shaft, but I have faith that we can probably make that work. Uh, actually, I have made it work <laughs> here on the other side, and we'll I'll show you how I did that here in a minute. So, all right, so these little bags, these are parts. Uh, this is, I'm keeping everything together, the uh, few parts that you need to uh, <laughs> to secure this to this little motor and this frame. A uh, little note about the frame, this frame is cast iron. So if you were to drop this locomotive, uh, likely this would break. So, you know, if you're gonna work on this, be really, really careful. <laughs> so, all right, so like I said, I bought these aftermarket uh, American Flyer uh, wheels they are not very good quality the chrome is already peeling off of them but they will roll and they won't be warped and they will be good so like I alluded to in just just a just a moment ago uh, these wheels what happens when they get older is they they actually expand and uh, they rot and they're rotting you know they're making the wheels physically bigger and not only that but they make it to where these wheels are no longer round and and they'll they'll just wobble <laughs> they, you know so i mean even if we were to put this back on the axle very likely it would just wobble see it wobble <laughs> so all right yeah that's that's not going to work so all right so let's get to actually putting the wheels back on so um this guy here i've secured and uh, we're ready to work on this side and i have some ideas on how we're going to do that uh so i guess before i get into that let's talk about these wheels and some of the modifications that i had to do to make them work so you'll notice that these are kind of uh, a inset wheel with the with the uh, the the place for the axle kind of inset I didn't, know, I didn't know what to call that and so anyway what i've done and i'll show you a picture of what these look like before i ground them unfortunately i did not take a picture 
uh, or, nor did I show the grinding because I really wasn't quite sure what I was doing. But uh, I'll show you a picture. These would have had like a little square thing uh, for uh, to hold the gears. This is engineered in a different way. And uh, yeah, when I show you the picture, I'll put it right here. Yeah, that's that's what we uh, that's what we had to do because this guy has to you know as you see these are inset, and so in order for this to to go on the the uh, track properly and fit the actual gauge of the track uh, that had to be ground down. So it does fit and uh, yeah, we're gonna be good on that. So all right, let's figure out what we're gonna do on this wheel. So all right, let's 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 talk about the problem first off. So this wheel's on here pretty good and it doesn't, it doesn't spin on this particular axle. So uh, what happens is that when you grind these, the uh, hole is gonna close up just ever so slightly. And that gives you a little bit of an opportunity to get this on here uh, nice and straight. And, uh, you know, really you could probably leave it like that, but I'm going to do something else because you'll notice that it is wobbling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take something that we used the other night and let me get it out and uh, we'll be right back. And then we're going to, I'm going to show you how I'm going to keep that from wobbling. All right. So I showed you guys this the other night. It's, this is the uh, steel stick. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the wheel back off. And what we're going to do is gonna, we're going to fill the wheel with this steel stick. And we'll put it on here make sure it's not wobbling and we're going to let it harden and that will keep the wheel from uh, wobbling now i've already done it on this one axle and it worked really well so i know it's going to work i, I kind of cheated i got a little bit ahead because I, I really wanted to show you guys how this was going to work and i really wanted to make sure it was going to work uh, like i said with any luck whatsoever we will have this at least together tonight uh, i don't know about running but maybe um, yeah so, all right, while I'm mixing this up, let's talk about some of the things that I did while I was waiting on the uh, wheels to come. So, these little marks, early motors, are really, really sensitive uh, in the area. Well, these gears, you'll just notice, are really thin. Uh, they call these clockwork gears, well, because they resemble clockwork. And uh, <laughs> so, the uh, brushes, I don't know, maybe I'll insert a a thing here to where it shows the uh, where the brushes meet the armature here it's a really really crude design and sometimes if you're not careful when you're cleaning this armature especially if you don't take off this plate and even if you do take off the plate these little arms will move and it'll get the timing for the motor the timing for the brushes out and when you do that it is a really big pain to get it back in time uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway I've got this uh, armature all cleaned up I've got the brushes all cleaned up this guy should be ready to go other than getting the wheels on. I've cleaned up the, the chassis real good. And this is this is really looking promising. So all right, I talked a lot and I didn't mix, <laughs> I didn't mix my epoxy, which is what, what, what my aim was while I was talking. And uh, yeah, I didn't do it, did I? So all right, let's get this mixed up. Uh, probably I should not be doing this in my good work clothes, but you know, I'm excited. <laughs> I got these wheels on the way home and I mean, I just had to do this. I just, it, been thinking about this ever since we got this super super exciting so once again thank you Melvin for sending this thank you for entrusting us with this I promise you we will try not to let you down so all right so uh, while we're talking about that while I'm trying to get this epoxy in here um, so here's my mailing address uh, if you have anything similar you would like to <laughs> like to see put back together that you know you're not going to do anything with uh, or, you know, maybe you want to drop us a, uh, a line or a card or whatever. We like mail. So, all right, so there's that, and that's how you can uh, contact us. All right, so now I got this stuff all over my hand, <laughs> and I might ought to wipe it off. Let me go do that. I'll be right back. All right, so as you can see, I have the, uh, po the uh, epoxy. I guess that's epoxy in here, the liquid steel. And I just have it filled to the back and filled on the front. Um, just to keep it a little neater, I'm going to try to get some of this that I accidentally got in the spokes out. Um, I don't think anybody would ever see that, but you know, I like to do it right when I can. So, all right, I'm just gonna pull this out. And I will tell you that probably when we're done with this, we're gonna have to wind up putting a little dab of red paint or something here in the, uh -oh, in the center to, uh, to hide that gray. Um, if we had some red nail polish, that would probably, probably be about the right color. Um, Obviously, I don't have that, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> all right, so I think we're about ready to put this axle through, and we will see. Let's see what we can do here. 
So I mean, obviously when we stick this in, it's gonna kind of squirt out the other end, kind of like a pastry tube, but that's okay. What we're doing is trying to, trying to fill it in, make it to where it won't wobble. And this is, I mean, it's, it's not just terribly, terribly too big, so it really should not be that difficult. So all right, so I've got that in there. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of get some of this excess out of here. I definitely don't think we need that. Uh, we might just have a little little dab there on the on the end just to kind of help secure things and keep things right but other than that i don't really see that we need to well that screwdriver wants to roll off doesn't it it's all right so yeah just kind of make it a little neat look in there so i think once the uh, frame is on it's not very likely that you will notice that this is like this all right Get that all cleaned up. Get this bag to help me a little bit. And then we'll move on to the next one. So, like I said, this is kind of a, a little bit of an advanced repair. Um, <laughs> uh, prior to starting the camera, I did spend uh, several hours in my garage trying to figure out exactly what to do to make these wheels uh, <laughs> work like this. And uh, yeah. So, I mean, if you have a bench grinder and, uh, you know, I mean, the, the wheels weren't but $40. The wheels were not, not expensive. Like I say, they're not very good quality, but you know what? I think for probably what we're doing, it'll be okay. So now, before that putty dries, I just want to make sure that we kind of got our gauge correct on the track here. And that looks pretty good. Very nice. All right. All right. All right. So, uh, that went so well, I <laughs> think. I think we should do it again. So this one, like I said, is already done. This guy's actually, the uh, epoxy is already set up. Uh, I don't know if you can see the, the uh, chrome finish on this wheel, but that is definitely going to come off and uh, it won't be too pretty, but I guess we'll live, right? So all right, the gear side goes on this side and there's supposed to be a gear, I mean a gear, a washer that goes right here. And that's in my little plastic bag here. And we'll put it in now we may wind up taking this back out and the reason i say that is because this is a different wheel and so maybe maybe if i put this washer in here it's gonna hold it too far out we'll see here in a minute let's see wow that, that wheel is really loose all right so uh, let's get it back on the track here we'll check our gauge make sure we're doing okay you know i think that's i think that's pretty good don't see a problem with that at all. All right, cool. So all right, so all we gotta do now is button down that wheel to that axle. This one will be a little more challenging just cause it's a little looser. Uh, we got real lucky on the others cause like I said, when I ground off the uh, back, well, goodness Greg, I ground off the back to uh, to make it to where it would sit flush enough to, to fit the right gauge, it, it really, really helped it. So all right, that, that washer definitely does probably need to be in there. All right, very cool. Very good design, Mark. Um, I'm Mark's. Ives. Well, I called it Mark's, didn't I? Got Mark's on the brain. <clears throat> All right, so uh, my putty that I just mixed up has already hardened to the point that I cannot use that. So let's get this uh, done here. And uh, learned just a minute ago, I obviously can't <laughs> can't carry on a conversation and mix, mix this at the same time. So chewing bubble gum and uh, walking is probably out of the question. All right, here we go. So who knew that we would be using this for this? Certainly not me. Uh, here in a minute, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag, get a transform, make sure we have some, <laughs> make, sure, make sure we have some continuity here to uh, get those wheels. I think, I think because of the way, well, this one may not, cause it's not as, not as uh, tight on there, but I think the rest of them will conduct the uh, power we need to uh, to run it. Uh, we will see here in a minute, and uh, I don't know if this is actually a uh, steel product at all. It may conduct electricity. You know, I'd, I've never known. Uh, I guess we'll find out together. All right, is it in there? How are we doing? Try not to get it in the spokes because it's actually a little bit difficult to get that out. Not horrible, but a little bit difficult. All right, so you can see it's kind of starting to come out this end. Just gonna wipe that kind of smooth 
All right, so get kind of the excess off here. And uh, I'm just gonna wipe my hands. <laughs> Very cool. All right, so uh, let's see what we can do. So like I alluded to just, just a little bit ago, uh, we are really expecting that we will put this on the track this afternoon. We will see. We will see. All right, get that on there. That one did not, did not catch very well at all. So I'm wondering if there's something else I can do here. Let's see. All right, I'll be right back and let me see what I can do. Maybe it just needs to harden a little bit. All right, so that's set up a little bit more. And we're gonna try, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the ticket right there. All right, cool, very good. Very good. So, all right, now we're gonna have to <laughs> gonna get this stuff out of the, the spokes again. All right, let's see what we got here. Come on, come on. Man, I am super excited. Thank you, Melvin. This is awesome. All right. Well. So obviously, if you could find the uh, proper proper Ives wheels, this would be a lot easier. The, uh, the problem is going to be that I didn't see anybody that manufactures the Ives aftermarket wheels, and maybe I just didn't know where to look. But uh, it's not like you can actually buy a used one and use it for the wheels, because like I said, when these old wheels rot, and they do rot, uh, it's gonna, you know, make them unusable. And because of the age they are, I would say it would be highly, highly, highly unlikely that you're going to find, <laughs> find some that are not rotten. So, yeah. Uh, all right, trying to get this on here. Really trying to make this kind of sort of aesthetically pleasing. Uh, although I'm really, frankly, <laughs> not very sure that you're even gonna be able to see this, frankly. So let's see. All right, yes, 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 I like that. So all right, so I got a little bit on one of the spokes and I think we're ready to kind of let it chill, let it relax, let it set up, however you want to say it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, all right, let's see here. Wow, see I thought I had that one kind of sort of done, but no, yeah, come on. Probably if I had a, had a toothpick, this would be easier, but I don't think I have that. All right, very cool, very cool. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, let's uh, let it set up, let's see what happens, and then we'll be right back. All right, so all these wheels have dried on the epoxy, and I think we're ready to uh, see if, uh, <laughs> maybe we can make this go, so all right. Uh, it feels a little strange. I think this roller may be a little too high, but anyway, we can we can definitely or this track could be bent too. This is the original uh, ice track that came with it. So all right, for the first yeah, it's got a dip in the track. I <laughs> see it. All right, well that's cool. Well not cool, but you know that that explains what it's doing. So all right, so um, I've got this transformer out here, and uh, not unlike the uh, uh, marks that we did the other night, these would not take a whole whole lot of power. So we're just going to give it about that much power, and we're just going to see. If this guy actually moves or what he does now i have like i said cleaned up the uh, armature and uh, serviced it as best as i think i can without disturbing it a whole lot once again these are very very fragile so you want to do uh, what's necessary but not a lot more so all right let's see is it gonna go i'll be darned <laughs> we ran out of track but yeah it goes cool so all right so i think the next thing i want to do is i want to get some of that little red paint out and i just want to paint these because that <laughs> kind of bothers me <laughs> let's do that all right so as i alluded if you have some red fingernail polish that's probably the way to go on this but this will be good enough and like i said i don't know that anybody's actually gonna be able to see that when it's on the shell anyway all right we're just kind of doing it because well i like doing stuff <laughs> all right here we go here we go just kind of try to get it on there so far, so good. 
Doesn't have to be perfect, I just want it to not be gray. All right, very cool. There's one, and uh, maybe we'll come back and do a second coat here in a minute, or maybe not. I don't know. See how it dries. See, y'all are lucky because, uh, you know, you, you see it instantly dry. <laughs> I have to actually wait on it to dry. So, all right, there's that. Let's do the other side. Now, this is going to dry not shiny, so that means it's probably, probably better, actually, because it won't be is obvious. All right, there we go with that. Last one. So, all right. So, American Flyer steeple cab wheels on an Amer on a uh, Ives rather steeple cab. Very similar. <laughs> very very similar. Just slightly different on the axle size. All right, let me get my paintbrush cleaned up. We'll be right back. All right, so let's start putting some things back together. What do you say? <laughs> All right, so once again, I will tell you that this is cast iron, so do not drop it. If you drop it, you probably will have a very difficult time <laughs> finding another one. That's right, the way this is held on is by four screws, and I didn't show you the screw holes before. There's one here, uh, one, well, I can't do it because of the wheel, but one that's identical here and then two more in the same place on the other side. If that makes any sense whatsoever. I think it's okay. I think it will be clear. All right, so I put my little parts in these little bitty Ziploc bags. Perfect for train parts. <laughs> so, all right. So this is pretty simple on the reinstall here. I'll say that and immediately screw it up. But let's see here. Let's see here. If we can... Got one. So, all right. Uh, I think that if I was to give some advice at this point, I would say do not tighten any of them up all the way. Because I think this does have some room to move. And that way you don't have to worry quite as much about uh, where the holes are. All right. We got one side. That was pretty quick. So this cast iron cleaned up pretty nice. I didn't repaint that or anything. That looks really nice. Actually, the chassis turned out pretty nice as well. So when you're cleaning up these uh, old chassis like this, if you're inclined to do that, uh, I will warn you to be very, very careful about what you use and where you use it. Uh, these armatures on these guys, uh, they use some sort of adhesive that, uh, that holds the little uh, plates, the collector plates on the armature and if you use the wrong thing it'll delaminate them because <laughs> uh, it's kind of it's almost like a glue and it's you know obviously very old glue at this point anyway so uh, you want to be real careful as a matter of fact other than your uh, fiberglass uh, pencil you probably don't want to really get much in there at all all right here we go here we go so so far so good interesting to see this guy go around the track and I think that's what we're gonna see I think we are uh, not actually far from seeing that so stay tuned um, not very often and never on this channel anyway have you uh, seen a uh, <laughs> an Ives uh, 3251 3251 steeple cab well, we do have a 3252 which is very similar but it's not this cool green color and uh, this is the first time ever for this one, which is always, always special. All right, so make sure this guy is tight, but not, not super tight. Cast iron, nope. <laughs> All right, so we got that. So we've got one little thing here to deal with, and that is this wire right here that goes to the light. And uh, the way I like to do these is ideally I'd have a, a, a quick connect where you know you could just connect and disconnect it kind of at will but what I'm going to do this time I'm just going to kind of twist these together and then I'm going to get some heat shrink tubing and I'm going to put it on there and that way it'll be easy to get apart should, should we need to take this back apart uh, at some point in the future uh, frankly I'm, I'm kind of hoping that we don't because uh, yeah every time you take apart one of these old guys you kind of run the risk of something something unexpected happening. So it's just better to leave them alone if they are functional. 
don't fix it if it's not broken. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. That's all right. This is uh, not working exactly like I thought it would. So uh, need the smaller, smaller heat shrink tubing maybe. Yeah, that ought to work, I think. So do I have this twisted very good? Because it doesn't look like I have this twisted very good. I'm trying not to break the wire <laughs> is what I'm trying not to do. So I think that's good. I think that'll work. All right. A little heat, because, you know, heat shrink. Well, that ought to do it. Well, we don't need to burn down the house. So, all right, let me uh, let that cool for just a second, and then we'll cut it to the, uh, the length we need. So, yes, that was a little warm. All right, there we go. Good enough. Very cool. <laughs> all right, so now, we have the uh, body attached to the wire, and I got out a bulb. I tested it earlier, and uh, just spoiler alert, it does work. It's all right. Now, let's see. I believe the way this goes, very crude, very awesome. And now if we run into too many problems, we'll, we'll go grab to the 3252 and <laughs> see how this really should go. But I think, I think this just simply goes underneath the shell and it's got a little slot here that it uh, that it rides in. So all right, so the uh, so what's gonna happen, and you can have another one of those hold your tongue just right moments, is that oh my goodness, you line up all the all the holes there, and then put your screw in and uh, just attach it to that frame. So let's see. Am I even doing anything yet? I really can't tell. So, all right, let's see. Maybe I can, maybe I can line it up now that I got the screwdriver out. So, all right, come on. And go backwards to it clicks, and then we'll go forwards, which will keep us from cross-threading it. Dad caught, taught me that. That was pretty handy. All right, so, not wanting to go exactly like I think it ought to. One thing you don't want to do is you don't want to get in a trouble. Uh, in trouble. Well, you would be in trouble. You want to, You don't want to get in a hurry and, and force anything. Well, we've come. We've come really far and done really well so far on this. And uh, yeah, don't want to get in a hurry at this point. Although it should be easy, wouldn't it? So all right. There we go. Yeah. So sometimes, <laughs> sometimes if you have like identical screws and you know that, that would have gone. Uh, on either end and it doesn't go on one end for whatever reason try the other screw and a lot of times you'll find that for whatever reason <laughs> it'll work that way so all right one last screw here you'll notice that I did not completely tighten down the other end so all right I'm getting excited I'm getting excited so right. my apologies if my head is in the way let's see see that one went right in so yeah that uh the advice I gave about trying it on the other end, good advice. All right, sometimes I do good stuff. So, all right, when I get this tightened down, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this light bulb in here, and then we're gonna give it a little power, and we're gonna see if the light bulb <laughs> uh, will light up. Clearly, I don't think this would have been the style of light bulb that probably went in here, but what I have so that's what we're gonna use all right so oops well we do have power so let's see I need a ground which can be the body I suppose or the frame and then hot all right we're good look at that all right so let's uh let's put it on the track <laughs> the one little piece of uh, ice track that we have up here once again it is a little a little bent a little weird and uh, let's just give it a little power and let's see what happens. So, all right, I'm gonna try to do this in a way that maybe I can, can do this and uh, stand back all at the same time. I mean, not that anything bad's gonna happen, just get out of the way of the camera. So, all right, let's see. Oh, no, up oh, there it goes. All right, cool. <laughs> all right, so who wants, wow, that track's bent, who wants <laughs> Who wants to take this into the train room and maybe even put these guys behind it? Um, I have service these a little bit, and uh, let's see, uh, let's see what we can do for the first time in 
my goodness, who knows how long. <laughs> yes, I, I think we're going to see this 3251 uh, run tonight, and I think we're going to see these uh, these cars run behind it. Now I'm going to have to get some of this uh, lubricant and stuff off the wheels because otherwise it's not going to make for fun. All right, let me get this done. We'll get it on get it on the track in there. And we'll go from there. Let's do it. All right. No, it is not your imagination. <laughs> we are not in the train room yet. I just thought I'd give this a kind of a close up before we get it in there and uh, show you guys the, the nice new wheels and how sharp they look. Uh, you might notice that the uh, center that I took the time to paint, you definitely cannot see. <laughs> so I guess that was a little pointless, but you know, I kind of enjoyed doing it. It was kind of fun. All right. Now we're going to the train room. Let's go do it. All right, so we have the Ives 3251 steeple cab from the 20s on the track. That makes this close to or possibly over 100 years old. So uh, this will be the very first time that it has run, and I can, I can promise you a very long time. So I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to say that even this probably is the first time that this locomotive has probably run in my lifetime. I'd say that's a pretty safe bet, actually. It takes about 40, 50 years for those... Uh, little wheels to rot and start getting to where they won't run anymore. So uh, yeah, if it's almost 100 years old, I'd say it's still a pretty pretty safe bet. <laughs> Do a little math there. All right, so let's, uh, let's see if we did any good. So uh, I wanna thank Melvin once again for entrusting us with this and I hope we did you proud. Let's see. Very cool. <laughs> How awesome. So Melvin, the... Uh, the power plant, the motor on this guy was awesome. I mean, in, in amazing, amazing shape. I had to do very, very little other than clean up and uh, just uh, some tidying up, and that was it. This guy was in awesome condition. All right, guys, how about that? So uh, I'm not going to run it too much because, as I said earlier, those uh, brush plates on the armature are held on by some sort of adhesive. And as the motor warms up, the adhesive tends to want to let loose. And uh, so if you never get it too warm, you run a much less risk of these uh, little plates falling off. And if they should fall off, well, good luck finding an eyes armature. So, all right, I'm going to pull this over here. I'm going to get the uh, tripod down on the ground and get you guys the views that you like. This is going to be awesome. Let's do it. It doesn't get much better than this. <laughs> How awesome. Thank you so much, Melvin. This this has really been a joy. Uh, we really, really appreciate it. We will add this to the collection, and I promise it will have a very, very good home. We will take very, very good care of it. All right, guys. Well, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I definitely, definitely, definitely enjoyed this one. So I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Appreciate you guys uh, sharing this with me. Until next time, I think this is about it. GGS Railways out. Wow. <laughs> so awesome. <laughs>